What a joy I have today to be with you. Thank you so much for coming. I've been trying to think about this uh, whole uh, Sleeping Beauty thing. And <laughs> <laughs> so if you're the Sleeping Beauty, there has to be a prince somewhere. That's right. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not me. <laughs> Except to one. Yes, that's right. I'm just the gardener today, and I'm glad to come and uh, share with you. I'm just so excited, I really am. In life, sometimes you get to do some things for the first time. And today, right now, right here, is my very first time to speak at a ladies' conference, and I'm on it. I'm going to try that Texas dip thing. Yeah. <laughs> Someone will be assisting me up. But I'm so thankful to uh, be with you today and excited. Uh, thank you, Judy, for having confidence. Uh, I met Judy and, and Dana. Well, we've done, met Judy before, but Dana we met the first time in Nicaragua last year. Uh, Judy, my wife Judy, uh, were there to speak at a conference. And uh, from that meeting, um, really today uh, has been, has been uh, uh, is the result of that. And I'm a man on an assignment to uh, speak a word into your life, and it's going to be my joy to do that. But first of all, it's great to see some very lovely and beautiful, familiar faces. And uh, thank you, Debbie, um, Gamble, and Lira, uh, for uh, we have such a rich friendship with uh, she and Michael, and uh, they were um, in North Carolina to celebrate our 20th year anniversary in North Carolina uh, just uh, a few weeks back, and we had the best time. Uh, we have such great shared memories. And as you get older and start to live, live a more life, the circle of people in your life that have similar shared history starts to get smaller and smaller. So I encourage you to value those friends you have that have been meaningful to you. But uh, thank you, Judy Pogue, for the opportunity to speak and uh, honored to be here. I want to just recognize certainly my princess queen, woman of God, mother of my children, love of my heart. My wife, Judy, is here. Please stand, Judy. This month we've been married 37 years, and uh, she, I told her when uh, I, I'll never forget when she asked you to marry her. There was uh, <laughs> a special moment. Uh, I, I told her, I said, "Look, if you'll stay with me, we'll go places, and places we have gone." And uh, we were in the Texas area in Dallas for 11 and a half years, serving at Covenant Church. I kind of say from from the 300, the church about 300 when we started, about 6,000 when we left. And now for 20 some years been in the Carolinas and having the time of our life. But I really do feel like the Lord has given me a word for you today. And, uh, and, and if I were uh, with men, I would say I've come loaded for bear. But because I'm with you beautiful ladies, then I've come loaded for deer. <laughs> and you're all deers and you're about to get shot. <laughs> that analogy is not working very good. I want us to pray, and then I, I do want to just um, kind of ease you into some thoughts that I feel like the, the Lord has. Um, I feel like I'm booming here just a little bit. I don't know if you're feeling that out there, but uh, I tend to project. Oh, it should be fine. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the encounter and worship we've just experienced uh, with Julissa, and Lord, how we've touched the hem of your garment today. Now us, we ask, Lord, as we open your word, that will open our hearts and our minds, that transformation will come by the power of your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord, awaken the sleeping beauties within. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sleeping beauty, my version. In a faraway land, a beautiful princess fell victim to the curse of a rejected fairy. No, this is not a true story. She was about 16 years old. The princess pricked herself with the spindle. Oh, this is the, the curse. When she is 16 years old, the princess will prick herself with a spindle and fall down dead. Fortunately, another fairy was able to get the curse upgraded to falling asleep instead of dying. The, the, the only cure for sleeping beauty was the caress of true love. Despite the king and queen's valiant attempts to get all the spindles banished, from the kingdom one fateful day, she found one. It pricked her finger, and the princess and all in the castle went into a very deep sleep. For 100 years, the castle lay waste with an aggressive hedge of thorns 
surrounding it and its occupants all asleep inside. Many princes tried and failed to breach the hedge and to save Sleeping Beauty. Then one day, after the 100 years had expired, a handsome prince, upon hearing the rumors of the beautiful princess, risked the difficulties to see her. When he came into the castle, it was like time had stopped. And when he saw Sleeping Beauty, his heart was smitten. It was love at first sight. And then with love's true kiss, Sleeping Beauty woke up. They married, lived happily, happily ever after, the end. Thank you for letting me share today. <laughs> well, while we know it's not a true story, sadly, it does unfortunately represent a lot of people's lives. Life was going so well. You were happy, you were enjoying life with your family, your calling, your ministry, your passion, and then it happened. And suddenly everything stopped. Your normal is interrupted by unexpected issues. You didn't ask for it, you didn't want it, but suddenly it's in your life. And I've learned that when things of sudden nature happen that have the potential to throw us off track, that we get confused and we're not sure which direction is up, and you have to come to the understanding that you aren't always understanding. You have to understand that in those times when you don't understand, certainly God does. In fact, Deuteronomy 20, 29, 29, a bit of a default scripture for you. If, you. if you don't understand something, it just simply says, the secret things belong to the Lord, but the things he has revealed belong to us. In other words, the things that God shows you, he owns, but the things he doesn't give you rhyme or reason for, he owns and chooses not to tell you except for you to trust him through it. It may not be easy and it may not be comfortable, but you trust God through the pain, through the difficulty, because He's the only one, according to Romans 8, who can take everything in our life and make it work for good. And we know that all things, how many things? All, all things. things. That's everything works together for good to those who love God or are the poor according to His purpose. Yeah. Call it a valley, call it a, a, a funk. A funk, by definition, is a state of depression, a bad mood, a low, the dumps, the, the, the doldrums. Maybe it came by the words of others, a disappointment, a betrayal, abuse. Maybe it was a divorce or neglect or infidelity or offense, an accident, a diagnosis, a stage of life, sickness, bankruptcy, abandonment or sin. Or many fi women find themselves in this state what I call suspended vision, where you had a momentum of your life going, and then it happened. Whatever it is, I don't know what it is for you. The potential is that there is something that has transpired that has caused you to go into a catatonic state of existence, where you feel like you're just going through the motions of existence, but really not making the progress you really want to make. And purpose has been swallowed up in pain. And passion has been reduced to duty. And momentum has been sacrificed to mediocrity. And you're wondering if you're ever going to come out of it. You know, many have allowed the problems of life to actually steal the word. And sometimes you feel so depleted, you don't even have the strength to do the right things. You may feel like time has stopped. And you can't seem to wake up from this bad dream. Well, I'm glad to announce to you today that the Prince of Peace is in the house. Yes. Amen. And he is speaking life into yes. your world. He is speaking life into your life and give you the, the kiss of true love to turn things around. I love what Romans 13, 11 says. And do this knowing the time that now it's high time to awaken out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. 1 Corinthians 15, 34. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. For some do not have the knowledge of God. What's going to wake you up from your sleep? What's going to awaken you to snap you out of the potential place that you have been where you've been high-centered, 
maybe, you know, if, we, if you read the book um, by John Bevere, The Vain of, of Satan, he talks about how the, the bait is, is the word scandal on, which we, we get the word scandal from. But the bait is the attraction into the trap. And that offense is much like a bait. And you can choose to be offended or you can choose to not be offended. But when you take the bait, then the trap snaps down and it's got you. Right. But, but being offended is a choice you make. Right. And you have to make a choice between life or death. God said, I lay before you blessing and cursing life and death. Choose life. Choice of life means you deliberately, intentionally accept what has been provided for you and take on the life of God and let the true kiss of righteousness come and touch your heart Amen. like never before. I, I love this scripture in Psalm 85:10. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Mercy brings truth just as righteousness brings peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And he's come to awaken in you that dream that has been dead. Maybe put to the side because of the circumstances of life. Maybe you started your marriage with great aspirations and children have come to take up the time you thought you were going to invest in something else. Some people are wired to be able to work with their children and some sort of calling in their life and make it work. Others, they can't do that. It's either going to be one thing or the other thing. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? It's either the children or this vision thing. And you feel like, well, I love my children, but I feel like I'm being robbed. You're not being robbed of anything. Because everything has its time and its season. And just because you're in one season doesn't discount the validity of the other season. Amen. Because you haven't got to that season yet. Right. You know, we, we can talk about the beautiful women in the Bible. And I, I love uh, the, the passage as it relates to Esther. She had one shot before the king. Uh, the, 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 the king was trading in wives. Um, the old had, had some issues, and uh, she was on Prozac and somewhere, and so <laughs> he got another one, just like the other one. And so they got all the women together, and in her moment before the king, the scripture says, actually, in the older King James, it says that when she came in front of the king, the Bible says that he had, she had grace and favor in the sight of the king. Now, is what's interesting. Now, in King James, it says grace and favor. And I couldn't find anywhere else in the Bible where grace and favor were so closely connected in Scripture. We're like on the same line, one word apart. Because the definition of grace, and our definition of grace, is favor. And the definition of favor is grace. So in that moment, she got grace, grace, or favor, favor. She didn't have favor and grace just because she showed up. She could have showed up with a potato sack, matted hair, and green tea. She showed up in front of the king saying, Light it on there. I think I want this. Yes, it is not a matter of just showing up, but the Bible says of her, for at least one year, she was in preparation of deportment, of how to care for herself in beautification, bathed in milk and oils, for that one moment, one year of preparation for. One second, ten seconds, five seconds to make an impression in front of the king. In other words, her preparedness created an opportunity for the grace and the favor of God. Favor doesn't happen just because you show up. Favor happens because you have prepared yourself for an encounter with God and a moment in, 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 a, in a circumstance that God ordains for your life. And in that moment, the favor of God comes. Why? Because you're ready for it. So don't discount the time you have as a mother or a, and, and, or, your, or a domestic engineer. You're at home with the kids taking care of things and you're wondering, I've missed my shot. You haven't missed anything. If you're still breathing air that God has not done with you yet. Right. He may be home, but you are preparing for That's a right. greater moment. What greater moment than you have to raising kids. I understand. We, we love kids and we've got great ones and we thank God for them and they're beautiful and they're amazing. But they're going to leave home. And they're going to start their own family. And it's going to be you and Bubba. <laughs> and, and he's going to look at you and say, Buttercup, I sure hope you still love me like you used to when, before the kids got here. Because this is all that we got now is you and me, baby. 
Well, now, maybe in that time of resourcing in that child raising season, now God is ready to release you into something greater. And so the, the, the awakening of sleep is to come out of your sense of spiritual slumber and to really embrace the reality who God has made you to be. It's time to wake up to our right standing with God. For us to embrace out in the image of God in us and who He has created us to be. The world wants to conform us to a whole different kind of image, and we know that very well. But God has an image for you that He wants you to function and live in, in reality. I love 2 Corinthians 5.21. For He made Him, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. In the old King James, it says that we might be made the righteousness of God. Here's the deal. Jesus became sin for us. He knew no sin. We had sin, and we knew no righteousness. He became sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. This plexiglass, when it was formed, it, was, it, wasn't, it didn't have any choice in what it was made in to be. It was created and put into this fashion to be a, a podium. Now, it didn't have a choice in being in this fashion, nor do you have a choice in becoming the righteousness of God. You are made the righteousness of God when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You were brought into the family of God and you were made a princess in the household of the King of Kings. Right. Now, the problem is a lot of princesses aren't walking in their authority. That's right. That's right. They haven't fully embraced all that Christ has done in them and that he wants to do through them. Because we live in a world and we have an enemy, that, Satan, who's as a roaring lion, seeking who may devour, and hits in a constant state of beatdown of everyone on planet Earth, especially believers. The last thing he wants you to do is to wake up to who you are in Christ. That's why the scripture says, awake unto righteousness. But your vision of you determines how you think God sees you. Say that again. I'm just going to sink in. Your vision of you determines how you think God sees you. In 1 Samuel 16, there's a great story of the prophet Nathan coming to the house of Jesse to anoint the next king of Israel. Of course, David's out in the back 40. And so the first brother lines up stands there and he looks like he would naturally be the one that God would choose. And the Lord says, I have not, I have rejected him. And then he goes on to say, very simply, we know this, God does not see as man sees, man looks at that what appears, God looks at the heart. You may have heard that scripture before. Man looks at the outward, God looks at the heart. But the part that always has struck me is this, is the first part. God does not see as man sees. God does not see as man sees, meaning anything that you see about you or about your life or about your destiny, God sees it way, way different than you see it. You may see yourself as a failure. He sees you as a success. He, 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 you might see yourself as being trapped in a, in, a, in a circumstance you can't seem to break out of. God sees you liberated and free. God always sees us way beyond where we currently are. And part of the walk of faith is that we're able to embrace where we want to be right where we are right now. That's what faith is all about. That's right. Faith is, uh, uh, Hebrews, uh, 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 is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Simple illustration. Flow with me. How many of you believe that I have in my left trouser pocket a, a lip balm? How many of you believe that? Let me say I have one in my, my left trouser pocket. How many of you believe me? I think it's a trick question. Anyone believe me? Yes. Three people. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm really connected with this one. <laughs> okay, so you don't, the rest of you are not sure. You think maybe it's a trick, trick question. They say, I've asked you to have faith for something you can't see. I have another question. How many of you believe that I have a lip balm in my left hand? Help me out, somebody. <laughs> well, respect me. No, you don't believe it. Because you don't need faith for what you can see. You need faith for what you can't That's see. Right. When you couldn't see it, you weren't sure. When you, when you saw it suddenly, oh, now I have faith. No, you don't need faith for what you see. You're trusting God for what you can't see. 
And here you are in the midst of your personal confusion saying, how am I ever going to get to where I believe God has destined me for? And you have to say, well, I see it in the Spirit. I receive it in the Spirit. I believe that I'm already there by faith. That's what, that's what faith is. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. And you've got to breach past the unbelief and the stress and the worry and the fear of where you are to begin to see a time in your future where God has for you. That's going to be a time of freedom and liberation and of fruitfulness and of connectivity with the purposes of God. We must align our vision and our view and our opinion of ourselves with God's view of us. Debbie, come back and help me for a moment, please. Um.